Disobedience, which is the new film uh, starring Rachel Weisz and uh, Rachel McAdams, um, latest from Chilean Argentine director Sebastian Lelio, who was who made the Oscar-winning Fantastic Woman, which I absolutely loved. So the story is that um, Rachel Weisz's character is Ronit, who we first meet as a photographer in America, in New York. She returns to North London, where she grew up after her father's death, and she is reunited when she gets there. I mean, nobody expects to see her. With Esty, who's played by uh, Rachel McAdams, uh, who has since married their former mutual best friend, Dovid, played by uh, Alessandro Nivola. Dovid was the favoured pupil of her father. Basically, her father was the mentor to David. He was known, her father was known as the Rav, and he was a very, very big presence in the uh, in the Orthodox Jewish community in which they they grew up and in which they lived. And she, Ronit, has been an, an absence for years and years. If you discover that she went off and she hasn't been in contact, and she almost didn't know that her father had died until somebody got in touch with her to tell her. That, she, that, that this had happened. And when she turns up, everyone's surprised to see her and everyone's very wary about her being there. And when she uh, first realises that uh, SD and David are now married, she is genuinely surprised and taken aback. And it looks like she's horrified. And what you start to realise is that there was a bond between SD and Ronit that was, that's you know way, way back in the past and is also tied up with the fact that Ronit had to go away, that she was sent away, that something—I mean, it's, you know—it's it's not that obscure, but you you, start, you understand that they had a that they were the, the the nature of their relationship was deemed to be something outside of what was acceptable, and Ronit reacted to this by being sent away. And now that she's back, all those all those uh, old connections start to sort of be uh start to be sort of re-inflamed and. As as you watch the film, the film sort of ex it explains its story not through people not again not through people telling you what happened, but through gesture and through what you see in the nature of their relationship. Anyway, here's a clip. So everything was all right when I left. No, I was ill, sort of ill. In my head, the Rav was afraid for me, and if I had to sleep with a man. Why not with our best friend? Oh, SD. I think, I think he felt that marriage would cure me. It hasn't been a complete disaster. And that's enough. Do you have to have sex every Friday? It's expected. It's medieval. It's not mandatory. Nobody gets beaten if they don't feel like it. What happened to you? Nothing. You happened to me. So you can hear in that, I mean, oddly enough, there's a kind of, there's an echo, although it is a coincidental echo, of the themes of the miseducation of Cameron Post, of somebody, you know, being a, a certain person and trying to think themselves through, to, trying to believe themselves into being somebody else because they're not allowed to be who they are because what they are is not acceptable in the community in which they live. And what's happened with these two different characters is that one of them has gone off to New York and basically sort of become herself and the other has stayed behind and attempted to repress the side of her that she's not been, you know, that, that is not acceptable to, to, to the community. And I mean, I thought this was really well done. It's bold, it's thought-provoking, it's clearly heartfelt, but it's also sensitive. It's based on a novel by Naomi Alderman, and it picks away at themes of loyalty and love and religion, and it does it with a mixture of subtlety and passion. I mean, it allows the audience to watch the relationships develop and to, and to put the pieces together themselves, which I think is very important. I like a film that doesn't lead you by the hand. It, you know, it, it, it allows you to fill in the gaps yourself. But it also doesn't shy away from depicting the passion that's clearly behind this relationship and which is in stark contrast to the sterility of the marriage which, which now exists because that's what the community demands. Um, as soon as uh, the two central women are reunited, one thing that happens, which is which is very subtle, is that they, it's almost like you can see them both becoming their younger selves again and becoming the element of rebellion because they were so close before in every way um, that they were that you sort of see them recharging those batteries and becoming younger versions of themselves again. There is, of course, a similarity to A Fantastic Woman because, again, that is a film in which a central character in the wake of a death suddenly finds themselves essentially shut out of their own life. 
And it's powerful and it touches a number of uh, sort of raw nerves, but I thought it was gripping and involving and I completely believed in the characters. I thought that at, at no point was it sensationally or sensational or exploitative, although it is very passionate and it's you can you know you can feel the the, the the emotion and the urgency of the emotion. I thought it I thought it was very, very well done. And what I liked about it was it's it's low key and underplayed. And yet that doesn't mean that it's in any way bloodless. It just means that everything is kept at a, at a, at a level in which it's, it's credible and understandable and you completely believe in the characters and you believe in their struggles. And I thought it was also respectful on all sides to the, to the issues that it's dealing with, whether they're personal or religious or whatever it is. I thought it, I, I, thought, I, I liked it very much. I'm, I'm, it's a good week, you know.